What's up tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City Season 4, Episode 2. So, we start this episode off, we have Heather hooking up with Whitney. You know, they still working on rebuilding their friendship um, and everything. And we, they get to talking about Angie K. Well, first they talk about well, actually, I don't know what they talked about first, but let's just go with AGK. Heather don't, don't like her, okay? They went, they went to high school together. They didn't run in the same circles. They don't click. They don't like each other. Heather says she's tried many times over the years, but she really still feels some kind of way about how she carried herself last season and the things that she said about her um, and in regards to her behavior last season and her connection with, um, with you know, with um, Jen. Now... Heather said later on in the episode that she's being very intentional about her relationships and she's very clear and she's got some clarity on her relationships. And I get all of that, but I just feel like you have reason to have beef with everybody. So I'm just not sure why you're giving Angie all this smoke, but she is. Then they get to talking about Lisa and her son's mission. Now listen, Meredith, I'm going to go on and tell you now, abort mission, put that thing in reverse. You don't win whenever you involve somebody's children. Here's the thing. You and Lisa are not friends. Y'all's entanglement, I don't mean that in a, y'all's, because it's not a friendship. Your business relationship, you guys are co-workers trying to build something. Um, I don't think you're in a good position to speak on her son's decision. Now, here's the thing. I understand that you have a very jaded relationship with the Mormon church at this point. You wrote a book, you've exposed everything, you've lost your, you know, you've lost a lot of your family to it. Um, you went through this divorce, you know, all of these things. I get you feel some kind of way. However, comma, you, especially living in Utah, you are going to have to find a way to have a healthy respect for people who are still Mormon. Um... I get it. You did your mission and you know that it's it's a hard thing. It's backbreaking. It's it's a hard situation. But at the end of the day, it's her decision and her son was well, really her son's decision. Um, and this just ain't gonna play back well. I think that because you have decided that the Mormon church is a bad place and it's not it doesn't have great practices, I think you've decided that nobody should be Mormon. And that's sort of coming off, it's, it just doesn't come off well. And I get it, if, you know, it just doesn't come off well. And I understand that it comes from a good place. But you're going to, it's starting to come off very self-righteous, you know. Um, yeah, so, but I'm sorry, I missed the part. Meredith and Lisa met up and they went for a walk. And... You know, I think both of them are cautiously moving forward. Now, they both apologized to each other, and I think they both meant it. They were sincere in it. You know, Lisa apologized for the hot mic. And this is the first time that I've heard Lisa apologize for the hot mic and not try to make an excuse. And that goes a long way. Apologizing without adding a but to it, it goes a long way. And um, so I think, I think they're going to move forward in a positive manner. Now, Meredith and Seth are in a good place and they have started a podcast. Now, look, I ain't mad at nobody for finding a hustle, okay? Gonna do your podcast. It's called Hanging by a Thread. She said, you know, in our relationship, we've been through a lot. We've had our ups and our downs, but, you know, we found a way to make it work and we want to just share it with the people. Child, if you like it, I love it, Okay. She decided she is going to have a girl's trip. They're going to go down to the Trixie Motel down to Palm Springs. Now, I know Trixie. Um, I'm a RuPaul's Drag Race fan. I've watched every season, so I know Trixie very well. Um, and congratulations, Miss Trixie, on this cross, um, on this, um, on this um, advertisement, okay? Because this is all advertisement for your nice motel establishment. I don't know if this is through your, I don't know if this is through, like, the relationship with World of Wonder. I don't know if this is something you did on your own. But good. This is a good look. Go for it, Miss um, Trixie. 
I shoot, I might want to fly down to the Palm Springs and hang out at the Trixie Motel. It look cute. It looks like a, a lot of pain. But it look cute. Um, Meredith decides that she wants to have a girl's trip in the spirit of moving forward and burning, you know, the sage and cleansing all these relationships. She wants to have a girl's trip. Now, she is not inviting uh, Angie for her own reasons, right? But she is inviting Lisa because she wants to sincerely, you know, make a step moving forward. So we'll see how that works out, child. So we meet Angie and we get a little more information about Miss Angie away from her relationship with Jen. Because last year, I think that was really our major connection. She is Greek. We see that she's teaching her daughter Greek. Um, she met her husband at the salon and they fell in love. He does hair. You know, that's how she met him. And she was working in the salon. He was working in the salon. Fell in love. Lived happily ever after. Okay. Fast forward, they own like, I think she said they have like 17 salons or something, a cosmetology school, you know, yada, yada, yada. So they doing really well. They've built their empire on the cosmetology industry and I ain't mad about it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave. I'm going to reserve some comments to some other things I see. Um... But again, you know, she happy to be here, child. She's just happy to be here. Now, we get a chance to get to know Miss Monica a little better. Now, last week, I told y'all, I felt some kind of way about Bravo hiring Miss Monica when basically her whole claim to fame was that she got all this dirt that Jen shared with her on the other ladies and that she actually testified against Jen like I was side-eyed. But this week, we got a different look at her. Um... And I want to believe that the Monica we saw this week is the real Monica. And the Monica we met last week was the Monica putting on airs, trying to fit in, trying to create her storyline kind of thing. Um, we find out that she was born in Boston. She moved to Utah. Her mom followed her to Utah. Then her grandmother came out. Her mom converted to um, becoming a Mormon when she was, I think she said so she was raised in the church um but she's now going through a divorce she started her own business where they do like swaddling cloths and baby you know sheets and and receiving blankets and stuff like that she said it started off as a hobby but now it's basically how she makes her money because you know her husband sort of took care of her but that fell apart and so she doesn't have the means that she used to have and she told her mom a story about going to Louis Vuitton and buying a bag. And she said, you know, I, I did it because I wanted to have something. And she said something nice to fit in with the rest of the girls when we're going on this girl's trip. She said, I've never been on a girl's trip before. And these girls have so much more than me. You know, she said, you know, I, I don't have a big house. I don't have all the designer things. And she said, you know, that's just not who I am. Like, I'm not really big on all of that, but... I felt like I needed to buy something designer to be able to hang with them. And her daughter, who was 17 years old, told her, she said, Mom, you don't, she said, I, and I love what she said. She said, Mom, I understand why you feel that way, but you don't have to. You don't have to do anything to fit in with them. And I was like, yes, you better let your mama know that I understand why you did it, but girl, you don't have to. Her mom also seems like a real firecracker child. Her mama was sitting there painting her nails. And she said, well, I'm going to need you to watch the kids while I go on my girl's trip. And she was like, she said, I'm good for about two hours. Baby, when I say I understand where her mama is coming from, I feel it. Because that is how I feel. I love my nephew down. But baby, they be like, so when does he spend the night at your house? He not. Baby, I will babysit. I will buy all the things. But Auntie House ain't baby proof. Okay. Um, but I thought it was a I thought it was a real moment. Like on one hand, we love the glamour of Housewives. We love to see these extravagant lifestyles that are not our norm. But the flip side is, I don't know what is going on with this recording. But the flip side is this was a real moment. And she ain't the first housewife that's trying to keep up with the Joneses. She ain't the first housewife that probably bought something that she shouldn't have bought to try to impress everybody else. 
And I, on one hand, like I said, I appreciate the rawness of it, that she's being real about it. But the flip side, I'm kind of like, mm, I'm going to see how this plays out, right? So Angie and her husband, Whitney, oh, that's the other thing. Whitney let Heather know, well, I like Angie, me and Angie have built a friendship and we've become friends. Like, I don't know why you don't like her, but I do. So Whitney and her husband go out, they do a double date with Lisa, I mean, with Angie and her husband. And we find out that Lisa and her husband are having some adjustments to, you know, everything they've gone through in the last year, him losing his job, her relaunching her business, her exposing her trauma. And she said, you know, we realize that we're not really good communicators. And so we've been working through that. We've been, been, been trying to be intentional about that. Um, and then Angie K talked about how their 12 year old daughter sleeps with them. And Whitney was like, child, when, when do they have sex? If the 12 year old daughter is in the bed between the two of them every night, like when, when does that happen? Again, I'm going to reserve my statements. Okay. So she finds out about the trip to Palm Springs because Whitney assumes that she's invited because she was like, it's a girl's trip. You're part of the girls. I just assumed you were coming. And Angie was like, no, why wouldn't Meredith invite me? She said, I don't have an issue with Meredith. Me and Meredith, you know, we've been very supportive. Girl, come to find out they did all the hair for Meredith's fashion show. And her husband was like, yeah, we lost like 30. He was like, yeah, we lost like 33% of revenue in one of our salons because we sent our stylists over there to help her for her fashion show. I said, you better know them numbers. You better know that it was 33%. <laughs> I said, you better know it was 33%. So Whitney decides that she's going to invite Angie. Now, ain't nobody told her she can, she can bring a plus one. Ain't nobody told her. Uh, there's a reason why Angie wasn't invited. Like, you didn't even pick up the phone and call Lisa to find out why Lisa ain't invited. You just decided in your infinite wisdom that you was going to invite Angie against what the host clearly wanted. Now, Whitney says later on that she absolutely understands that she is lighting the match. She says she gets it. She knows that what she's doing is going to be a problem. But she just feels like if we are really, truly trying to move forward and we're really, truly trying to build um, build these relationships, then we got to burn this house down and start from the beginning. Like, we can't skip steps. If she's part of the group, then we need to, we need to unpack all of this. And I was like... There go Whitney stirring up the pot, being messy as fuck. So then Heather goes shopping with Monica because she wants to get to know her better. And Heather, you already starting off wrong because you're telling stories. Um, you calling that girl your friend. And she's not your friend. You don't know her. You just met her. See, that's part of your problem. You're starting off wrong because you're using the word friend. And you probably shouldn't. But moving on. So she was like, well, how do you know Lisa? She said, well, I met Lisa through Angie. She was like, oh. Huh. Well, how do you know Angie? She said, well, I met Angie through Jen. So, of course, now Heather's like, Jen? Okay. So she was like, oh, so how, you know, she said, yeah, I went to high school with Angie. I know I've known Angie for years. And she was like, really? She was like, you went to high school with her? She was like, so are y'all cool? She was like, no, I don't like her. <laughs> I said, okay, Heather. She said, yeah, no, I don't like her. Mm-mm, we ain't cool. And she was like, I've tried over the years and it just doesn't work. It just doesn't click. So, you yeah, know. Um, so then Monica shares a lot of her story with, Cause, um, with Heather, because of course Heather's asking her. They took a, you know, they they had some champagne, and she lets her know that she was Mormon. And Heather was like, "Oh well, we shouldn't have had the champagne, because she that was one of the things she said about Lisa earlier. Lisa says she's a Mormon, but I mean she owns a tequila company, and and she drinks coffee, and she does all these things. She doesn't wear her garments. And I'm like, didn't we cover this season one? We had this whole conversation season one about Lisa and her Mormonism. Look." I understand and I get it that there is an expectation in any religion, but in any religion, you have the people who are here and you have the people who are here. That does not mean that they, they still do not adhere to that religion just because they may not follow every single edict, um, of, of being a part of that faith. Okay. Um, I grew up Catholic and I can tell you it's a lot of stuff I don't do. Okay. 
But child, we find out Monica got married in the temple, but then excommunicated from the church because she confessed to the bishop that she was cheating on her husband with her brother-in-law. Her husband's sister's husband. Girl, last week when you said you had an entanglement, I think you might have short sold this situation. This is more than an entanglement, my love. Okay? But girl, she got excommunicated from the church. She said, but nothing happened to the guy. He still, you know, he still is a member and he can still come and go freely. Like, you know, they... She said, but not for the woman. You know, for the woman, it's a problem. So anyway... Heather was like, okay, girl, I see you. Like, we got a lot more common than I thought, okay? So everybody's going on the trip. They all get to the airport, and um, Heather's not there. I mean, Whitney's not there. And Whitney just sends this cryptic text to Meredith saying, I decided to take another flight. I'll see you guys there. Meredith doesn't know if the flight is earlier or later. And, of course, Whitney took a different flight because she's got Angie with her, and she wants to surprise everybody. So the ladies fly out. Child, they get to Palm Springs. Lisa done lost her damn ring. Lord, why did Lisa lose her ring in the bathroom? All them women was helping Lisa find that ring. Child, Monica said she put her hand in the tampon disposal. Now, I said, you really trying to be cool with them. You really trying to get in where you fit in because I be damned. If you can't lift it up and see what's inside, I'm not putting my hand in none of that, okay? Um... But they didn't find it, child. Lisa, Mary, I mean, Lisa talking about how it's a $60,000 ring. And here go Mary. I love Mary. Mary was like, first of all, I don't think it's worth that. Baby, Mary told Lisa, well, if it's, if it's a $60,000 ring, it's insured. Like, girl, you got to let that go. <laughs> and she not wrong. I mean, if it's legit a $60,000 ring, it's insured. And I get it. You, I mean, I've lost, for, I've lost jewelry. This necklace right here, when I was on my flight, where was I flying to? It wasn't last summer. Wherever I went the summer before last, literally on the flight, we ain't even left D.C. yet. I It got caught in something, and I literally popped this chain, and I was so pissed off the rest of, not the rest of the flight, but I was pissed off for a minute because I was like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, so I ain't even left yet, and I done broke my daggone necklace. I mean, granted, I had it. I could put it away till I got back and so I could get it fixed or whatever, whatever, whatever. But I get it, and especially a $60,000 ring, even if she exaggerated the cost, it was an expensive-ass ring. So I feel Lisa on that, and I even understand Lisa going on and on and on. Now, of course, it was annoying, and she got on everybody's nerves, but I do understand. I definitely understand it. So, while this is going on, Whitney and um, Angie then made it to the hotel, and we meet Trixie and everything, and Trixie's giving them a tour of the facility, and they had the nerve to be like, I mean, well, I'm, you know, well, she wasn't invited, but I don't see, I don't think it's, it's not a big deal. Trixie was like, oh, it's not a big deal, only that you brought somebody that wasn't invited. Heather talking, Whitney gonna say, well, they didn't say I couldn't bring a plus one. Girl, they didn't say you could either. I'll be honest. I've done that before. And in hindsight, I realized how much of a, a, a faux pas that was that I invited somebody. I, I did a plus one in a situation that I probably shouldn't have done a plus one. But it wasn't somebody that the person purposely did not invite. I just was like, oh, girl, you can come with me. Not realizing that it probably wasn't a good idea to bring the girl with me. Anyway, that was another situation. So, of course, they have this whole moment of climax, and that's where the episode ends, with the ladies showing up, um, not knowing that Angie is there. So, anyway, we'll see what happens next week. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.